Godzilla build part one. Take three. Today we're going to be showing you how to build a budget PC instead of you guys having to spend thousands of dollars on a PC. Alright guys, so the website that we're going to be on is going to be on PCPartPicker.com. PC Part Picker is a site where you could virtually imagine how much your PC is going to cost you. But the PC that I'm going to be building in this video is going to cost me around $912.35. That being said, it's because I need a powerful computer that could handle strong editing for videos and Photoshop and Photoshop requires this very demanding software also is Adobe Premiere they're very demanding software so I need something more that packs more of a punch instead of just for gaming remember every bill is going to be different from prices um, don't always limit your options to just one site let's say we just buy all our stuff on Amazon we could probably be paying overpaying for the parts that we're actually going to want for example let's say this case right here atx mid tire case and i found the same exact one except white for 27 dollars 99 cents and this one is retailing for 57 dollars 98 cents so that being said always do your research on different sites don't always just go to one and think you're getting the best deal because there's always going to be a better deal out there especially for pc parts so i already made the list of the parts that are going to go into the build not the one i'm actually going to build of the example build and how you can save money so let's go ahead so right now I picked a AMD Ryzen 5 2600 34 Hertz 6 core processor 12 threads I think MSI B450 Tomahawks Max ATX AM4 motherboard I picked this board because you don't need to update the BIOS the BIOS already comes updated in the board Team T-Force Valken 16 gigs 2 sticks non RGB I think retailing at $69 you could probably find it cheaper if you do your research Western Digital Blue 500 gigs a mech of uh, SSD running for $64.45 and then State Barracuda 2 terabyte for mechanical hard drive for 50 bucks MSI Raiden RX 580 8 gigs armor overclocked video card running for $168 on Newegg and then this case right here that we already discussed in the beginning now keep in mind as long as you do your research right this price right here isn't always accurate you can actually build a computer cheaper than that so let me do some research on the actual parts and how much they actually are and how I could lower this. I'll be right back. I just want to break up a real quick point. So let's say you can find a motherboard that is cheaper let's say for example msi b450 gaming plus desktop motherboard amd b450 chipset it's actually going for 104 dollars compared to the msi b450 max so i would go with the msi b450 gaming plus so i'm actually going to switch the prices i'm going to switch to the msi b450 gaming plus max So I just want to prove a real quick point. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the PC part pick picker. Um, so this MSI Raiden RX 588 gigs I'm running overclocked is running at $168.98. As we looked right here, they're actually selling for $100.15. Okay, so we're back with the results. 
Um, so the original price was going to be $653.36. So I did all the correct research to see where we could get the parts cheaper and where the the newest price is now for these parts. So let's go ahead and go to the calculator. Our original price was $653.36. Let's go to the calculator. It's going to be $424.02 to build this PC. That's not including shipping. But since we actually stretched our money across the table, we can actually add up a good power supply. Let's look that up. By the way, if you're going to go with 750 watts or higher, that is overkill. <laughs> that is just overkill unless you're mining like Bitcoin or something else. Always make sure it's gold plus rated or above gold. If it's bronze plus rated, you could kill it. You have the potential to kill your PC within the two years. Bam, right there. So you could actually take out the MSI RX 580 out of the equation, upgrade yourself to a better graphics card if you're willing to spread your money that far. Do your research, always do your research on every computer part that you're planning to get because each price is on each part on a computer, it fluctuates. So you can actually build a better computer and then a pre-built. So all that being said, I just proven that we could build a computer that runs five times better than the Xbox One alone for cheap, for super cheap actually. And I also proven that as long as we could spread our money good enough, we could actually upgrade certain more parts to get better parts. For example, we had more room to stretch on the graphics card if we wanted to, to stretch on the CPU to go with a 3600K. Uh, Ryzen 5. Another being said, let's go ahead and get to tearing down this PC for us to show you step by step how to build a PC. Alright, so many of the things you're going to need for this build is going to be your motherboard, the B Tomahawk, or whatever the motherboard you have for me. For instance, I'm going to be using the Ford B450 Tomahawk and the Motherboard Gaming Plus Max. For storage, I'm going to be using the, the Western Digital 1TB mechanical hard drive with another Western Digital of a SSD, a 240 gigs. And then I'm going to be using a Godzilla for that case, for the theme of the case. Um, following that is going to be the EVGA uh, power supply. This isn't actually a 600 brown, bronze rated, it's actually a 600 gold EVGA power supply in this box, which is didn't have the box at the time. What? What the f <laughs> Following that, we actually have a MSI RX 580 graphics card, only going for 100, 100. $10, I believe. And then following more storage, we're going to have the G-Skill Trident Z 32 gigs 
of RAP DDR4. Cooling wise, we're going to be having a all-in-one AIO liquid cooler Earn Max going on top of our CPU for our cooling. Our CPU that is going to be going into this build is going to be a Ryzen 5 3600 GHz, 6 cores, 12 threads. Very good for clocking. This is a K edition CPU. Um, I did not have the box. This box is actually pretty. Following that is going to be a Arctic fan. Uh, F9 silent. So taste wise we're going to be using the Arctic therm uh, thermal paste that's going to be going onto our cooler and our CPU to keep the heat distance at, at a minimal. Ideally we would want the CPU and the cooler, mainly the CPU to stay roughly around 80 Celsius or lower. So case we're going to be using today is the Fantex 300P. Case is just beautiful with an acrylic glass and you can just show off the beautiful parts of the RBG if you have RGB. So the first thing we're actually going to start off with is going to be the V450 motherboard. Any build, you could do it however you want, but I recommend professionally and personally to start off with your gaming motherboard, or a motherboard in general. Make sure you have your CPU on the table as long with your RAM sticks. And of course the GPU. So let's go ahead and get everything all set. Alright guys, so the parts that we have right in front of us is the power supply, the motherboard, and the all-in-one liquid cooler, along with our RAM, our graphics card, our CPU, and our thermal paste. Um, that's everything that we're going to have in front of us right now. Um, Tool-wise, you're going to need a screwdriver, a screwdriver, a screwdriver, a screwdriver, a pliers, those more pliers. pliers. Those are more pliers. They yeah. are. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and put the motherboard on the mat. Put this to the side. Alright, so we're going to actually go ground ourselves for, for us to be non static. And what I mean by non static, your motherboard is very sensitive to static electricity. So you can create static just by rubbing against the carpet, uh, your clothes. Um, your hair, pretty much anything you can create static with. So right now, we're going to actually unstatic us. There is three ways. One, you can get a mat that is non-static. The second way would be with a bracelet, non-static bracelet. But since I, I'm, most people are not going to have this stuff provided to them, I'm actually going to show you how you can ground yourself just by using your power supply. In other words, just PSU, just by itself. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. <laughs> that whole tangle of wires. Don't be afraid of this. This is actually super easy to do with all of this. So right now we're actually just going to ground ourselves. So we're going to put our power supply on the table. Alright, so there we go. So we are grounded. So now all you would want to do is just touch a raw metal part on your power supply that is not painted. If it's painted, you can always scrape that paint off with a simple knife, with a flathead, crosshead tool, and just get a little of that paint on, not too much, just a little bit for you to see raw metal and touch it. Just like that, just touch it. Because your power supply is now grounded to the wall, which is running electricity the B450 mud board and then we have our power supply grounded to the, to the outlet for us for it to be grounded so just in case you ever feel static and you feel that your body getting static just touch your power supply we're going to go ahead and open it get our power get our motherboard uh -huh. get our motherboard out of the box move this out the side so this bag right here is the non-static bag which allows your motherboard to be non-static for it to not cause damage while it is during shipping or you're carrying it out from the store to, to the house. So the things usually will come with is an IO shield, mine is busted. The manual is actually what is going to provide you with the most type of information there is for your motherboard and we're going to show you how to post the motherboard just in case uh, before you actually put in the motherboard into the case just in case something is wrong and you need to pull the motherboard out. This is how you're, how you're going to point out. Alright, this is irrelevant. 
And then of course it's going to come with some nice little decals. The CD, which nobody uses anymore for optical, optical drives. Keep the box here, just in case you're not feeling safe enough. Your box could be um, your standpoint for your motherboard while you put everything on it. Let's go ahead and close it up. We're going to get my motherboard, the motherboard out of the static box. And then whenever you pull the motherboard or you handle a motherboard, always grab it from the heat shrinks or the IO shield part for you not to damage the actual board itself. You still have that potential of damaging certain pins because like right here there are certain pins that you can actually damage by grabbing it. As you can tell right here and right here, there's all these crazy looking pins. So, the first things first, we're going to install our CPU. Alright, so now we're actually going to install our CPU right now. So, there's this little bar right here. You're going to pull just a little bit and lift it all the way up. Don't lift it too much or else you're going to break the backing of the CPU holder. Just lift it enough. So, there's that little triangle right there, that cold triangle right here. As you can see in the corner of my ugly ass nail. Right there. And then if we look right here onto this board of the motherboard, there's a little triangle right here hidden. Right there. It's in that little corner. So those two little triangles are going to need to match. So another reminder, just make sure you keep holding the CPU on its side. Never touch it from the gold pins. Um, you, you have that potential risk of damage in it if you do press it hard enough. So when you put in the CPU, you actually go triangle, triangle. Like I stated, the gold triangle, the gold triangle. Just don't be gentle. Just don't be rough when you put it in. Gentle. And like right there, how it's not seating properly. We just found out that this hard drive right here actually fell on top of the CPU earlier. So we actually found Quite a bit of pins that were bent, but we managed to get it all straightened out. But usually, um, let's say a regular CPU or a CPU, um, let's say you're just putting in a CPU, the CPU would normally just go in and fit nice and tug. So you could actually move it, feel it, if it's nice and snug. So after you're done, all you do is bend this down. You're going to feel a little bit of pressure, don't be scared of it, and it'll clip it. That's it. That's literally it. You just installed your very first CPU. The memory. So, there's these little tabs right here, channel 1, channel 2. Um, go ahead and read your manual, see where the RAM sticks will usually go in. Um, since we took this apart, so we already know where, where the RAM sticks would go normally. So. Trident Z, 32 gigs, G skill. So normally there's a little notch right here in the RAM sticks. You just place it in there. As you got it in there, wrong way. As you get it in there, just push it down until you hear a click. Click. Same thing on this side too. Same thing, click, click, that's it. You just installed RAM. The IOU, liquid air, the liquid, uh, liquid cooler. We're gonna be installing our, our cooling for our CPU next. We're gonna be installing a liquid Intermax uh, all-in-one liquid cooler. Usually, most people are gonna go traditional and go with fans. Um, cool Master or Hair, Hair, um, and the side cooling fans or whatever type of CPU fans you're going to go with. Um, we're going to go with our liquid cooler. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory with a, a CPU fan. Normally the CPU fan will come with the brackets in the box with the CPU uh, or in any CPU fan in that case. So this right here is going to be our AMD bracket to install the liquid IOU. Um, AIOU, yeah it's the AIO. AI. Blah, blah, blah. Whoops! Even I like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and lift our board up. Um, always read the manuals to every part that you buy. Always make sure it's compatible to the, mo 
to the motherboard that you are going to be doing. So we already assembled our bracket. So all we do is go on the bottom here, slide it in, get in there. Yeah. Hold it, slam it right there. Now, so next step, we're gonna get our handy dandy sets of uh, screws. <laughs> Uh, throw them on there. Make sure you're always touching your power supply when you feel static, as you see me do throughout this whole video. Just all you do is bam in there. Uh, uh, right there. Well, bam. Okay, so the next one would be our Arctic coolant, our thermal paste. So the thermal paste method, normally. You could do a grain of rice, where it's the size of a rice, or the size of a ball. Not, not a ball, no, not, not, not like a big ass ball, like a pellet, like a BB size. That's a grain of rice right there. Right there would be a grain of rice. But since I am doing a liquid IOU, I don't want it to overheat. I'm going to make sure I do a little bit more. Right there. So the, in theoretically, but as soon as you plat this, just splash it onto the thermal paste. Theoretically, this paste is supposed to spread out throughout the copper, the copper and the CPU. All right, guys. So basically, I already put the all-in-one liquid cooler on, except I did not tighten it down. So what we want to do is just tighten it down while pushing down on the all-in-one cooler until it tightens all the way, just with our fingers right now. Like that. Mm. Mm. There you go, and this one, there you go. Now, this is where a screwdriver will come in, cross head, preferably, and just, you want to tighten it down with the screwdriver in an X in a cross pattern, kind of like a tire, or just in an X type form, for the tension to be even all the way around the all-in-one cooler. If not, you're gonna get the infinite spin and you just, it's super annoying getting the infinite spin. Okay, so we installed the all-in-one, so now we have to plug in the pump, the fan and the pump. Pump, 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 pump. Where are you? Usually there is a, usually there is usually, <laughs> <laughs> Pour it on your motherboard that says pump band one. Oh, usually don't be rough, don't mess up the pins. And just slide it in there. Go ahead and click this in in the four pinner. Oh, just like that. It's in. All right, so we just plugged in the wires to the all-in-one liquid cooler, so now we're gonna go ahead and install our graphics card. Our graphics card is going to be the MSI RX 580. We're gonna go ahead and press this right here in the motherboard. So when we put it in, we're going this way. No. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I know you're doing it right. Oh. So when you do it, push it down, so it's a click, like that, and you install a GPU, power supply, because we are actually going to post the motherboard. When we buy post, we're going to test the motherboard, make sure it works, it boots, um, for us to know that it's not defective before we actually go ahead and install it into our PC case, and see if we did anything wrong. So. You're gonna get your power supply. Uh, your your uh, magical wonder of 10 million ways of messes that you regret because you're actually building a PC now, and now there's like you're looking at 10 million wires here. Oh. Uh, yeah, just like that. And then usually you just pop right in. Go in there, Timmy. Yeah would be the CPU power for the CPU. 
Uh, depending on your motherboard, it could be a 4-pin connector or 8-pin connector. Uh, for us, it's going to be a 8-pin connector. So we're going to go ahead and plug that one in. Uh, plug in our GPU connector, which powers our GPU. So all this power right here is transferring from the CPU. Well, the main power connector is transferring to the CPU, and then it goes to the, to the GPU. And our GPU is a 8-pin. It can connect it. It's okay right now, it doesn't matter about the rat's nest. That's everywhere because the motherboard is actually out. Um, the rat's nest, the whole mess situation won't come into play until after we get into the case. And cable management. Alright, usually it would just go right on in. Oh, there, just like that. Oh. Be careful because some GPUs actually might be bigger than the board. So if you press on it, on the edge of the GPU, it can actually pop it out of place. So be careful on that. Make sure when you put in the, the supply out of the case, the power supply to the GPU, just hold it by the, the end when you put it. As you just saw what happened, it jumped out of place. So now it's time to post. Let's go ahead and connect our monitor here, our Predator uh, 4K monitor. Not 4K, I kind of forgot the specs on it. We have our monitor connected, right? We have everything set up. Now it's, now it's time to post it. How do you post it? Okay, so the thing you're gonna wanna do is go in your manual. In your manual, you usually, it's gonna say where each pin goes. Power, reset button, switch, LED, HDDD. Uh, LED, power, L L LED, all the lights and power switches that powers your motherboard from turning on, turning it off. And so how we post it, we're going to short it out. For this motherboard to post it, we need to short circuit these two right here. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Everything's looking good. And done. And then, boom, it posted. So right now we are running a CPU at 3660 gigahertz, DDR, just one stick for now, um, at eight gigs, no, 16 gigs, because they're both 16 gigs, or uh, 32 gigs Trident. And we don't have anything connected at all. So the only thing it's detecting is the RAM and the Ethernet. Um, port, that's it, and the USB. That's literally it. Um, so, it works. Uh, let's go ahead and tear this back down. We're gonna take out the GPU and unplug the power supply and then we're gonna get our case and get everything going. Here's the Fantex Case 300, P300. Uh, let's go ahead and get this part. Let's remove one. There should be four screws, depending on the case that you have. Each case is different. Go ahead, take this off. Right there, pop it off. Careful with this glass, set it to the side. Next up would be take off this back panel right here. There should be two, or depending on the case. So the next step would usually be, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this face down, like so. So there's usually always going to be a, a bunch of bolts laying in the power shroud, which is right here. As long as you can reach all the way in there, you should be always in there. They're always included to every PC case that there is. Now we have to fit in our board. Before we start doing that, we're actually going to look what type of size our motherboard is. The bolts that have been included into the PC case um, and usually the manual. Sometimes there's a manual in these. So let's go ahead and put in the motherboard now. Um, where where the where you found the bolts in the component in the in the power shroud com, uh, compartment uh, usually there will be a booklet on where your board should sit depending on the board size mine is a micro ATX so there's going to be one two three four five six seven eight so there's going to be eight bolts I'm going to need to bolt bolt down in order to fastenly sit my motherboard into. Oh. Get 
just like so. Awesome. Don't tighten the bolts too tightly now, or else you will strip. You will strip them, and you will get the infinite loop. So after you're done mounting the motherboard onto it, let's go ahead and flip the tower up. And make sure you don't put any strain onto the liquid cooling on any of the tubing. So that there. Make sure there isn't a lot of stress on that. You will strip them and you will get the infinite loop. So after you're done mounting the motherboard onto it, let's go ahead and flip the tower up. And make sure you don't put any strain onto the liquid cooling on any of the tubing. There you go. Got one in right there. Next, let's go ahead and look. Our next thing we're going to plug in is going to be the USB 3. Right here. Yeah. So here's the manual to the motherboard and we're going to go ahead and follow this diagram right here. You see right here, power and switch is going to go to these two. We're going to look for some power and switch right here. What is that? Power and switch? Let's see if it goes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Let's go ahead. Connect it to the top. Okay, usually if you don't know how these go, um, there's usually a plus and negative sign. Let's see. Okay. There you go. There's usually a plus and a negative sign on the bottom. And if you follow the manual, it will tell you how they go. Next step, we're actually going to get this little guy right here and we're going to pass it through. Right, 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 right there. And this guy right here actually goes. This little pin right here is actually going to go right here. Make sure you don't bend any of these pins either while you're doing these. Because you see these bending, you know. Oh, there we go. It's in. Just like that. So we connected this one. We connect the USB 3 ports and the power switch and the LED HDD. We're gonna go ahead and install the, the GPU right now. Let's go ahead and install the GPU into our case. But we are gonna go and install the graphics card. Ready? Ah, oh, beautiful. Just like that. Okay, next step. We're gonna go ahead and install our uh, all-in-one liquid cooler in into here. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Someone to clean up and tame Oh, some things never change Never change oh. You think I would look pretty On your arm once you cover up my bruises And battle scars But it always ends the same Can't bear the things I've had to face Got you crying on your knees in pain Oh, some things never change Never change You'll break your back to make me feel again So forget to make me breathe again Lose your mind from Um, the power supply usually gets bolted in Let's see here, focus Right here Right here here and here. In this case, you have to slide in the power supply from this side in order to bolt it down right here. Some cases will actually have like knobs, tw thumb, thumb knobs that you just twist off that comes off and you bolt that onto here and then you slide it into here. So you're normally gonna get a tray like this in the Fantex type of case. Um, 
you're gonna go ahead and pop these open right here. Mm, mm. Get your mechanical hard drive into the spine just put it here. Uh, yep, it over. So just go ahead and align the, the mechanical hard drive with the holes right here. Pop it. And pop this side. After that, get your bolts that come with the case for the mechanical hard drive. All right, let's go ahead and connect that cable with the other cable that we just plugged in into. That was that went into the SSD. We actually got both of the hard drives connected finally, and then we're gonna go ahead and connect the stated cables. The stated cables are is what lets the motherboard read the hard drives and and find the hard drives for your operating systems and all that goodness stuff with with video games and editing softwares and all that uh, i connected the sata cables the sata cables are actually right where's my finger right there those are the sata cables those are the cables that connect into the hard drive and the mechanical hard drive I mean, the ssd the state of state state drive the ssd okay so we have the cpu connected the aio connected we have the fan the motherboard gpu everything is connected every little thing is connected in the top fan, everything good. So we have everything connected from the low wires from down there. So the only thing we would need to do next is the rat's nest that's right here in this bundle of happiness. Let's go ahead and do that and I'll explain how to do that right now. Okay, so dealing with the rat's nest. Um, here we are right here, this right here. So right away how this looks it's right coming down from here so let's go ahead and put a zip tie right here it doesn't matter what the color got the zip tie put a zip tie right there the reason they call this a rat's nest is because if you look up a rat's nest it looks exactly like a rat's nest let's get our cutters Okay, there's that. Now, let's get these cables right here. Tuck it in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's fine. As long as, long as you guys have a... As long as you guys have a power shield or shroud right here you could actually hide all this stuff just tuck it underneath there it doesn't need to be perfect because that's the whole point of that power sh shroud right there oh 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 let's go ahead and get this uh. Uh. zip tie these There you go. Let's cut this out. There. Then we're gonna zip tie this to this. Yeah, just like that. That is it. Now it's time to close it up. Let's close up this PC build.